Welcome to Grace Family International Church. The following you're about to listen to is a message from Reverend Yinka Ojo, our senior pastor. So sharpen your pencil, grab your notebook and Bible because you're about to be empowered. Listen and be blessed. Praise God. But so, when the word of the Lord comes for a year, you hear that pastors do it and um, I do it because the Lord speaks actually the future from the present. He is a God who lives in the future now and in the present. As far as God is concerned, the only time that exists is called now, eternity. And past, present, future are meshed into it. When we get into heaven, into, into, into God's presence, finally you will find that, that time is no more. It's only on this side of eternity that we have the concept of time. Some of us, it's very difficult for our brain to even wrap around that concept that there's coming a time when there will be time no more. Won't we be bored when we get to heaven and there's no time no more? Your ability to be bored, you will leave it here on earth. You cannot be bored anymore. That being bored, because time is going and all of that, is, is part of the fall of man. You will leave that one here. We can, you cannot get bored. Would I be tired of heaven? The ability to be tired of something, you, can, you will not take it to heaven with you. So you cannot be tired again. That's already blowing our minds. <laughs> you will just be enjoying. Then somebody told me one time and said, but pastor, too much of everything can be bad. I said, minus God. Minus heaven. You will be enjoying and you will be enjoying and you will be enjoying and you can't but be enjoying. And you will be enjoying it. Somebody say amen where you are. All right, but, but because we're in time and God is already in the future, he gives us a glimpse of what he has prepared for us. The word of God says in Jeremiah 29, 11, this is just trying to introduce my introduction. All right, Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, Behold, beloved, I know the thoughts and the thoughts, the thoughts, the thoughts that I have towards you. If you want to know, I want to show you the thoughts I have towards you. Jeremiah 29, 11, God is saying, I know the thoughts I have towards you. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil as far as God is concerned in his agenda there is no evil in your future if you walk with him closely with him thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a future and an expected end or to give you a future and a hope a future you can look forward to and anticipate for look at your man and tell anybody do you know my future is so bright my future is so bright. If you look into it, you will need sunglasses. Tell them. Dark shades. So bright. If you believe that, say amen. If you believe it. Only a few people. If you believe it, say amen. It shall be unto you according to your confession. Future is bright. That is the word of the Lord for his children. All right. So God is speaking again. And, and but, but you see, so God gives and God speaks these messages and these words. And no, no year really turns out the way you, a man actually calls it. Because a word, when it is given, it is really not, not just a word by my pastor, but God who has spoken. And I'm believing that this morning, and as we listen to this series of messages, you will believe God that God will speak to you directly. Amen. Of course, God uses human beings. God can use whatever he wants to use, but God calls people and he speaks to them and tells them to speak to, to his people. But I myself have to believe what he has said. Amen. The fact that I'm preaching it does not automatically mean I will enjoy it. I must now sit down and say, Lord, I myself, I believe this thing. From my own personal life and my family immediately. No more, no less. First of all, I personally believe it. All of us must personally believe it. Because really, no year will turn out just because somebody has said, it is your year of this, it's your year of that. No, your, that, the year, a year turns out for you according to the vision of the word of God that you have caught for that year. Praise God. Go to the Brahman and say, walk all over the land. As far as your eyes can see, that's what I'm going to do for you. That's vision. Somebody say vision. Very important. So, as we're preaching these messages, the idea is, the plan of God is that you will catch a vision. What 
is a vision? It is a picture of a preferred future that you intend to future. Just like they tell you, coming from uh, Dumata, Kaiweka Road, and they start showing you all of that, and they say featuring, and they show you all the Nollywood, wherever. Now, this one is a future that you are the star. You will feature in it. It is in your future. It is a picture in which you are going to feature in the future. That is your vision. And according to the vision that you can get from the prophetic words of God, that is how your year will turn out. So that's why all these messages, you have phones, let them, let them download it onto your phone. You have um, uh, USB, let them download it for little token onto your USB. You can get the CD, you can get the DVD, you can do all. You have no excuse so that you can hear it over and over and over until you begin to see yourself, picture yourself inside the word of God that this is, if nothing will, if nothing good will happen to all of the human race in 2014 minus me because I know what the Lord has spoken concerning me. Can I get a good amen? amen. Alright. So you got to keep that in mind uh, that is as far as you can picture as far as you can envision based on what the Lord has said. That's why you need to soak in these messages. As you're hearing these messages you have your own copies and listen to them. Soak them. Listen to less of music during this season and more of these teachings listen to less of all these movies and etc and more of these messages until because it's not the first time you hear the message that you will understand and it will form a vision inside of you no you hear it over and over and over and over and over and over until you see yourself a picture of the future that you will feature and it's a glorious future, God says. It's a wonderful future, God says. It's a future that is beautiful. Can you say amen if you agree? So the word of the Lord is in Agai chapter 2. You see, all of these words for, for the year, they are found as in this church. They are rooted in the Bible, in the scriptures. The Bible calls the scripture, we have a sure word of prophecy. Peter was speaking to, to the Hebrews and I was talking to them that we know who we believe in when we heard a voice we were in the Mount of Transfiguration and Jesus became changed he turned into white on that mountain and we heard a voice from the excellent glory talking about Jesus but then a few verses down he now said but even though we saw that vision and even though we heard audibly the audible voice of God we have a sure word of prophecy in the scriptures by the scriptures. No vision is superior to this thing. No prophet or prophecy is superior to the word of God. No doctrine or statement is superior. If the word of God is against you, that person is a liar. Let every man be a liar. Let God be true. And so, when God says it's our year of abundant living, John 10, 10. Amen. But this time around, hey guy, chapter 2. It's where the Lord has directed us to. Are you there in a guy? When we get to heaven, don't be surprised one day you are moving on one of the streets and one man bumps into you and says, hello, do you know my name? I say, well, I don't know you. Well, my name is Hey Guy. Hey what? He say, ah, where were you? 2013 stroke 2014. When the Lord used one of my messages to speak to you, at least when you get to heaven, you can say, well, that's one prophet I know about. Amen. Hey, guy. <laughs> Are you in hey, guy? Chapter what? Hey, guy, chapter 2, verse 6. And let's read. The word of God says, for thus saith the Lord. Oh, man, I got to do this in under 15 minutes. For thus saith, of course, you know, I can't really do much now. I got to continue in second service. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, once more. And it is, I'm going to read the Old King James Version. I like reading the Old King James Version because it has some reading and some rhyme and some nice words. And I can pick up some words that are really translated straight from the original. I love it that way. For thus said the Lord. Somebody say, well, pastor, I can't read King James. I used to be like that when I first got saved. And then I got spirit filled. And I was still struggling. And then the Holy Ghost told me, but when you were in secondary school and you had to read Macbeth and Shakespeare and all this, you read it now. All of a sudden now, you cannot read it in the Bible. I hope they still do some of this in literature. 
Did you read literature? Hello, how many of you did literature in secondary school? What did you read? Did you, did you still do Shakespeare? No, no, Pastor Della, not our generation. I'm talking about this new generation. Did, you, did, they, did, they, did they do Shakespeare? Do you read Shakespeare? How many of you went to secondary school in the last 10 years? Let me see your answer. Okay, did you read literature? Did you do Shakespeare? Huh. No, don't let me. Don't let me. I, I'm, uh, you didn't read Shakespeare? Romeo and Juliet, Macbeth, Julius Caesar, Othello. Oh, you don't need any. Oh, Lord. Let me just go on. I don't want the anointing to lift on my life. Let's go. Let's go back. <laughs> a guy chapter 2 verse 6. <laughs> That's a subject for another day. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once. I don't know how you can be allowed to leave secondary school and you didn't read Shakespeare. I'm actually a little bothered. Who, who graduated you and you did not read one Shakespeare book? For thus saith the Lord, we need to call a conference of all the, all the principals, all the secondary school principals. We need to. We really, we really need to. All right. Are we here? Stay focused now. Stay focused. Stay in the spirit. Stay in the spirit. For thus say <laughs> the Lord of hosts yet once. In other words, God, he said, I've done this before. But it is a little while. In, other words, in a short while, I'm going to do it again. What will God do? What's God said he's going to do? I will shake the heavens. And I will shake the earth. And I will shake the sea and the dry land. Verse 7. And I will shake all nations. And the desire of all nations shall come down. We have a church in England. Another one in Ireland. And, you know, we were there last few Sundays. We've been there up to last Sunday. But, but you know, I, I was telling them, you see, this country, the UK, they're not going to church. Sunday morning, they're not going to church. But if you go on the street, we landed there a few weeks ago, and I saw the street decorated for Christmas. I mean, the best decoration we have in Lagos, times 100 in beauty. Oxford Street, all, the, all those places, they decorated it and I just felt grieved and bad. But you are not celebrating him. You are not accepting him into your heart. So why? Why are you putting up? So for what are you not putting up the lights? That's hypocrisy. Somebody you don't know. You are trying, you are now putting up. Uh -uh. You should know him. Then he will be happy you are putting up lights for him. And I told them something that the Lord spoke to me. And the Lord said, you know, these countries, they brought the gospel to you in Africa. And they brought it to Nigeria and all of that. These nations in Europe and now Canada, America and all of that. But they are, they are, they are they're, they're sleeping. And there's going to be an awakening. There's going to be an awakening. And when a person is sleeping, how do you, what do you do them, to them? You shake them to arouse them. And God says, I'm going to wake them up. You see everything that's fine? All the streets are working all of the lights are working. The water is working. The security. In a little while, I'm, I'm coming. Because they need to know I'm their creator. And a shaking is coming to many of this western world. It has already started a little bit economically. Number of the people who are living there, who ran away from Nigeria because there was financial problem, are running back to Nigeria because there's financial problem there. Because said, no, no, that's kindergarten. They have not seen Meme. I will shake so that they can wake up. And there's going to be a great awakening. A spiritual awakening, a revival. And souls will get saved. All of the stadiums that they've built for us now, for Chelsea, for Man U, they will be used for crusades. Week in, week out. That's what I saw in the spirit. Last. Last. Those, those stadiums. Last. The way some of you are looking, self. So, yeah. The prophet is speaking. It's coming. It's coming. Praise God. 
Are we together? Are you still here? So God says, I'm going to shake all of these nations. But you have nothing to fear if you are working with God. Because you are planted as a part of the unshakable kingdom. The Bible says in Daniel. A kingdom that cannot be shaken. Only the church will stay stable in these last days. Only those of us serving Christ with both eyes will stay stable in these last days. Everything else and everywhere, high and low, Father God will sh shake and their teeth will rattle. <laughs> and they'll wake up. And then God says, and the desire, and the desire of all nations shall come. It has two meanings. The first meaning is that their desire will come to me. Now they desire other things. They desire money. They desire power. They desire influence. They desire publicity. They desire fame. They desire all those. Things. They ought to desire Jesus. And God says, I know what I'll do to make them desire me. Don't worry. I will sh when I finish shaking them, their desire will change quickly. And they'll start looking for me. He's coming. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor he's coming. And then God says, and then God now speaks about, that's for the nations of the world. But God now begins to speak concerning his house. Somebody say, I'm a part of God's house. If you are born again, say it out loud. I'm a part of God's house. Whose house are you a part of? Speak up. Whose house are you a part of? And so God, now, and that, this is the one that really concerns you and I, especially Grace Family Intentional Churches as we go into 2014. And then God says, and, and I will fill this house with what? Louder. Say it out loud. With what? Louder. Say it again. With what? Glory. God says, I will fill this house with glory. And we're coming to look at what is glory. He's going to fill his house, his church, with a substance. And that substance is called glory. Say at the Lord of hosts, verse 8. The silver is mine and the gold is mine. In these last days, money is coming to the church. Silver is coming. If you're part of the church, you better, if, if you say amen, it comes to you. I said silver is coming to the church, the house of God. Gold is coming to the house of God. We're going to learn some things about that in a, in a few services from now. But I don't want to. The dromedaries are coming. The camels are coming. They are on the way. <laughs> Isaiah 60, when I get to that point, you will understand. The camels are coming to your address. Loaded. Loaded with gold and silver. And they will find your house. And they will collapse there. And they will say, I cannot go again. I have reached Ebenezer. It shall be so in your life in Jesus' name. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Whenever you see God say, calling himself, God calls himself so many things, but whenever you hear the Lord saying the Lord of hosts, that does not mean the Lord that is going to serve you rice and chicken. I say, hosting you. No. That word host means the army, the vast innumerable army of God. This one is God's military title. So God is saying by fire, by force, if it requires war for it to happen, it must happen in your life. If I have to destroy every demon and clear out every human being that will stop it, I am the field marshal general. I am coming out. This time, God is not coming out dressed in white satin and linen. He is coming out dressed in military, you know what's called um, um, camouflage? With various stars and everything. Camouflage. God is God. This is God the warrior. So whenever you see the Lord say, This is the Lord of hosts, that means this is the Lord leading his army to bring it to come to pass. So this one is not a joke. It will happen. It is it's, it's happening already. So God says, Listen, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, said the Lord of hosts. Uh, the glory. The what? Say it with me. The what? The what? Now, remember, this is the substance it says I will fill my house with. The glory of this latter house. So, in other words, God had a former house. God had a latter house. 
we can divide it into Old Testament, New Testament, the church in the wilderness. The Bible calls the church, the people of God in the Old Testament, the church in the wilderness, led by Moses. So Moses was the pastor of the church in the Old Testament. It was a former house. But then God decided to have another house. This one, Jesus is the head of this house. This one is a spiritual house. While the former one was a physical one. But even in this latter house, in a way, there's a division again. At the beginning, Acts of Apostles, with people like Peter, James, John, Paul, they were like the beginning or the early part of this house. We are the latter part of the latter house. So, we are the generation that this prophecy must fulfilled upon. Can I have an amen in your life? From your mouth? We are the prophetic generation. We are the generation of accomplishment. We are the generation of fulfillment. Can somebody say amen? amen? Listen, even all the saints who are going to in heaven, they are envying you if you are born again and you are on earth today. They are envying us. Because we are the ones that will see God display himself like no generation has ever dis- has seen the display of God. That should excite you. We are going to see the manifestation. I don't want to go ahead of myself, but let me just say one or two things. We are going to see the manifestation and the display of God's power like never before. Praise God. Get ready. Get ready. Your God is arising in Zion. And the Lord will stretch forth the rod of his strength out of Zion. And we will rule. We will rule in the midst of our enemies. You and I will rule. You and I will not be controlled and dominated by the beggarly elements and forces of this life. You and I will control them. We will walk in complete authority and dominion. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Ordinary church members will raise the dead. Come on, please. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I need to say some things as I'm seeing the Spirit of God speaking to me, talking. A lot of things the Lord has been speaking to me the past few weeks. I'm, I'm trusting God that they will come out prophetically. Sometimes you don't need to wait until somebody says, Do you hear the Lord? No, 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 no. Before you know prophecy, inside messages, prophecy also comes out. Praise God. That one about the fact that all, what we call ordinary believers, raising the dead, that's a prophecy. To be so common in this latter house. Can somebody say amen? amen. And Pastor, what will I do with it? Does that mean I'll go and start mission? No. Doesn't mean you are called to fivefold ministry. You are just being a real Christian. And before we know it, only you, the people that will, that week alone, the people that will come to church because of what God did through your life will just fill that whole section. Can you imagine now? We have a hundred of you like that. You did the exploit during the week. All this one that we are trying to just do for Jerome, follow up for church to grow. Hey! When the glory hits. The reaper will overtake the sower. We will be scrambling for more space. And the Lord spoke to me and said, by the time the full blast of the glory hits, no church will be large enough to house and accommodate the souls that will flow in. No workforce, no follow-up force will be big enough. Then Jesus will be pastoring his church supernaturally. Can you say amen? amen? Say three hallelujahs if you are still here. Hallelujah. A louder one. Hallelujah. The glory of this land and house shall be greater. Somebody say greater. Amen. Underline greater. Can be greater than the former, said the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace. Everywhere else, outside the house of God, there will be katakata and turmoil. But God says the only center of refuge shall be the house of God. The only people that will know peace in these last days. Listen, we can do a lot of things. We can say we want to see national transformation, etc., etc. But by the time I start reading to you about some things about the glory in Isaiah chapter 60, you will find out that God has not promised that things will get better for sinners. It is only us under the refuge. Those of us who have run into the ark like the app that Noah built. Those who have run into Christ and are in the house of God and are not planning to decamp anywhere. That is where we will have peace and stability. All the others. So go and warn your relatives. Go and warn your co-workers at work. Go and warn your friends and let them understand. Peace 
will elude everywhere else apart from the house of God. Can you say amen? And this is, who is speaking here? Who is talking here? Who is speaking here? All right, he said, and in this place will I give peace. Say it who? So God says 2014 is our year of greater glory. Because the glory of the latter shall be greater. Somebody say greater. Somebody say greater. Say it again. Say greater. You want to be a part of that greater glory. Rise up to your feet. I didn't even finish line one of my sermon. Oh my, 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 my. Oh, Rebecca Tasakayaba. Lift up your hands and just thank the Lord God. <laughs> oh, for the greater glory, the greater glory. Lift your hands and tell the Lord, I'm a part of it. I'm a part of it. I'm a part of Rabatu Sumbre Yakata Sayababa. Oh, I hear the Lord say, There is an army marching through the land. I am raising a supernatural army. It's full of power and strength. I am not just raising a social meet meeting place. I'm not raising a place where people come and meet and greet and just socialize. I'm raising an army that is supernatural that will march through the land and take dominion and authority. Hey, and I've called everyone who has given their life to Christ to be a part of that army. And my glory shall be seen upon your life. And my strength shall be upon you. So prepare for it shall be greater. The glory shall be greater. The glory shall be greater. It shall be greater corporately and it shall be greater individually. And as many as will say, Lord, I step in. And as many as will step into the glory. Yeah. Oh, I will lift you up and bless you. I will expand and enlarge you. And many things that other Christians are struggling to get, they will just come of their own accord and manifest automatically in your life. <laughs> oh, it shall be a life of ease in the realm of a spirit. <laughs> for my glory shall bring it to come to pass. <laughs> so it's a time for you to hear. And it's a time for you to prepare. It's a time for you to align yourself. <laughs> and say, Lord, here am I. Send me and use me. <laughs> for I will not just listen to the statements and the news and the reports of the world. I will pay attention and listen to the report of your word and your spirit and your anointed servants as they speak and utter the words from heaven. And as I do that, Lord, I expect your arm to be revealed on my behalf. And I, the faithful God, I shall do great signs and wonders through your life. For there is a work that needs to be done and the time is short. Oh, and the time is short and the people are plenteous. Crying and saying, where are the true Christians? who will show us the way who will show us the light and who will show us the glory of God and the Lord is saying in you I, I have found people that will obey me and move in my power thank you for listening if you need more information on Reverend Yinka's messages log on to www.gfconline.org or call the following numbers 0177-44213 and 080-888-47223. God bless you.